Today we'll be talking about masking. Specifically, I'll be comparing the best of masking in Photoshop and its primary rival, Affinity Photo. Hint, Photoshop is great at creating masks. Affinity Photo is great at putting them to work. All right, we'll start off inside Photoshop where I have three different versions of the exact same model, all of which I have masked in advance. We'll see how that works in just a moment. And then we're gonna combine them together inside Affinity Photo because as you're about to see, Affinity provides some mojo that Photoshop absolutely lacks. And I should mention that all of these photographs come to us from the Dreamstime Image Library more important perhaps link in the description by the way but more importantly they come from the same photographer of course Edward Suverecht and if you believe as I believe that fellow creatives deserve credit then go ahead and subscribe won't you I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that guy's name just because I want to show you how the masking process works so this is something that you can do inside Photoshop currently you can't really do inside affinity not as easily anyway and so I'll just go ahead and double click on this background and call it model one so that we have an independent layer and then I will drop down to the contextual taskbar right here and click on remove background and what could be simpler right it uses a kind of AI variation of edge detection technology in order to figure out what's hair and what's not hair or what's human in the case of the skin tones so it does a good job on the shoulder for example and mostly on this left hand hair we've got some you know problems up here but we also have some big problems you know she's got some very robust hair going on bless her but it, it doesn't look right it that we don't we haven't masked the individual tendrils don't you know now affinity does provide a refinement feature but as things stand now the one inside photoshop selected mask under the select menu is a little bit better and so I'll go ahead and select it. Now, my one complaint with this workspace is that <laughs> I don't like it at all. It's actually my biggest complaint, but the, the, it, I, I just wish we didn't have to come here. This tool right here is so great. It's called the Refine Edge Brush Tool. It should be in the regular toolbox so I can get to it anytime I like. That's the problem. And then notice you just paint and it just sits there and refines the edges. I mean, it's so great. And then if you go too far with your refinement, notice I have some pretty big gaps going on here. Then you would press the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac and drag. And you can see, look, look at the center of the cursor right there. It has a minus sign in it right now. And as soon as I release the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac, it has a plus sign. Now that's not you brushing away details or brushing in details. That's you brushing in refinement, in this case, if I just drag, and brushing away refinement. So just something to bear in mind, you know, you, you basically can work as much inside this workspace if you want to. And that's kind of the beauty of it. So I'll give it that is that as long as you're working inside this workspace, it's non-destructive. And as soon as you click OK, you've made a destructive modification, not to the image. The pixels inside the photographic image are altogether protected, but you have made permanent modifications to the layer mask, which you can see has now been added. You can make further modifications if you want to. It's not the end of the world, but pixel level modifications are indeed pixel level modifications. All right, let's switch to Affinity Photo right here where I've got a background raring to go and now i'll go ahead and open up those images so i'll go to the open command right here and the great thing about affinity photo is it does open psd images that's not the only great thing about it but that's one of the great things compare that to photoshop being utterly and completely unaware of affinity photo's existence i don't imagine that's going to change anytime soon now I, I will, oh, I opened the wrong file, didn't I? Let's try a different file. It would be this one right here. I think so, yes, there it is. And what you would do inside Photoshop, and I really, I, I, I do wanna complain for just a second. Affinity, listen, if you're listening, add this. Just don't question, add it. You should be able to right click at this point, choose duplicate in order to move a layer as i have notice it's a mass layer into a different composition that just should happen don't ask why 
I hate it when software companies ask why you want a feature. You want a feature because it's the right idea. That you wouldn't have asked in the first place if you didn't need it. Anyway, what you got to do here is you press Control C for copy, and then you go to the other image and you press Control V for paste. And I know some of you are thinking, so what? Copy and paste, that's really routine. You do that kind of stuff all the time. Here's the thing. When you're dealing with pixels, they're huge. You're, you're copying all kinds of stuff to the clipboard. It's not a problem. As, as long as you stick inside a single piece of software, it's fine. But as soon as I move to a different piece of software, especially one that's not an image editor, it's going gonna, it's gonna to complain. It's going to be an issue. She'll come in last, so we'll wait on her. And I'll go ahead and copy her, so Control-C, and then move to this, Control-V. And I'll just go ahead and move her over with the Move tool. By the way, notice everything's coming in as independent layers just as I created them inside Photoshop. So this part is beautiful, wonderful, and now I'll copy her. Same woman, of course, and I'll paste her in the place and drag her to where she needs to be. I want her centered on that center guide that I've created in advance. Now, I also want to align the eyes, and so I'm going to press Control R, Command R in a Mac to bring up the ruler. Same thing in Photoshop, and I'll just make myself a guideline for where I want the eyes to be. So let's put them down here, let's say. And that way, I'll drag her down a little bit. So her eyes are centered, and I'll do that with each one of the other ones as well. I could just nudge her up a little bit, actually, from the keyboard. And then I might drag her up just a little bit. Actually, I took her too far, so I'll nudge her down as well. And if you like, you might also create another guideline for the mouths. Just make sure things are lined up the way you want them. Anyway, I don't want to see those guides anymore, so I'll press Control semicolon, Command semicolon on the Mac. Same keyboard shortcut as in Photoshop, by the way, those of you who are savvy with this program. Now, of course, what I want to do, things aren't going to be aligned, so bear with me here, but see how things shift a little bit. But this is what I want, right? I want her hair, the hair from one model, to blend into the hair from the other model, same model, different photograph, and, and so forth. I, want the, I, I just want her to blend seamlessly. So what you would do, right? I know you're sitting there thinking, okay, go to model two, and select the layer mask right there, right? And then just start modifying the layer mask. Get yourself the paintbrush and start painting away. But do you see how primitive that is? It's it just like Stone Age. Well, once you get familiar with Affinity Photo, you'll know. Because you don't have just one layer per mask in Affinity Photo. You have as many layers as you want. So you don't have to hurt a mask. Just don't. Don't ever hurt a mask. Add another layer mask. Like, for example, Model 2 selected. So I'll go down here and click on mask uh, the, with the layer mask icon, right? And it put a mask on top. Who cares? Drag it in there. And it becomes part and parcel of Model 2. And you can move it up like so. So they're clipped. All these layer masks are clipped inside the single layer. So I'll call this mask PS mask, right? Aren't you getting chills just thinking about how awesome this is? And I'll call this one left mask because we're going to mask the left side. And I'll go ahead and get the gradient tool. Now I have to admit I'm not a master of this tool. That will become evident almost immediately. I, I'm not sure which direction to drag. Ooh, I kind of got it right. But then I want to kind of move it down and around, and that doesn't seem to really be an option. Anyway, I'm just going to drag it over here, and so I'm adding a gradient mask on top of the other mask. Hey, real quick, adding multiple masks to a single layer in Affinity Photo is great, but let's say you want to control how the masks interact with each other. That's when you need what's known as a compound mask. To learn how it works, join my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash dicknow. And now I'll come back to it. Now in Photoshop, I will say, right, there might be a Photoshop defender in the audience going, well, technically, you know, you could take this, if you really want to keep your mask independent, you could take this layer, put it inside a group, assign a layer mask to the group and work that way. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to be adding a third mask, by the way. Oh, I'm, I'll do it. I'll just click right there. Ha, huh, Cavalier. And I'll just drag it down in here and uh, drag it to where I want it to be right there. It doesn't really matter what the order is at this point. And I'll call this one right mask. You can't do that in Photoshop. You can add a vector mask. It's a pain in the neck, but you could do that as well. But you're not going to get a gradient out of it. And now let's see if I can use the gradient tool. Not, not well. Obviously, I dragged the wrong direction, so I'll drag the right direction this time. And, you know, you get a couple of gradient masks on top of the existing Photoshop mask, right? Which I'm still not going to edit. I'm not going to harm that mask. So now I'll go to left mask here. And now 
check this out. So I've already used the gradient on it. There's no special, there's nothing you can see. I can't really revisit that gradient. I don't think I must be getting something wrong there. But anyway, I'm going to switch to the paintbrush tool and I want you to see this. Watch how it previews. I'm not painting. I'm just moving my cursor around to just get a sense of what's going to happen. More chills. Aren't you feeling it? It goosebumps all over the place here. X now to switch my foreground background color so I can paint with white now. I think I'm painting with white. Who cares? It just, it, it shows me. I don't have to even think about it. Uh, who cares if I'm painting with black or white? Am I painting what I'm seeing in advance? I'm previewing the effect. And then I can go down here and go, oh, I want to paint in more of the hair and the shoulder from the model over on the left-hand side because she's in back. I'm really just modifying find the, the middle model at this point or I could paint back her shoulder I could do whatever I want right I like the other thing better I think because otherwise she has too many underarms and then I'll go to right mask right here and I could paint you can see it's gonna preview right there it's just gonna show you what you're gonna do in advance it's crazy and then press the X key in order to switch back and maybe paint some of that hair away and so if I haven't made this clear enough Yes, it's great. I'm not just a little bit of a summary here. Yeah, it's great that in Photoshop, you've got that remove background function that's missing inside Affinity Photo right now. Affinity, add it and you're golden. <laughs> just figure that one out and that's gonna make all the difference in the world. But then here inside Affinity Photo, you can add multiple masks to a single layer. Why you can't do that in Photoshop after 120 years of using the program, I don't know. So what do you think? Comment below and then subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when I cover what. And for a look at how you can do even more with compound masks, join me at patreon.com slash deke now. And then go to deke.com and sign up for my absolutely free newsletter. I'm Deke McClellan. This is Deke Now.